In this video, we will look at electrothermal analysis of an MMIC amplifier. Here I have the test bench that contains an MMIC amplifier as a sub-circuit and also having harmonic balance and as parameter as a simulation controller. And all this amplifier components come from ADS demo kit which ships with ADS and it's called demo kit nonlinear which is uh, having all the components which are thermally enabled as a normal foundry PDK. So let's go ahead and run a normal circuit analysis first and look at the circuit response. Here on this data display, you can look at its parameter and harmonic balance performance. The amplifier shows around 28 dB of gain and a pretty decent return loss. The output power at the particular input power we simulated is around 13 dBm. Now this is a normal circuit analysis. So let me go ahead and switch on history so that these traces are freezed on the graph. Now let's go back and enable electrothermal analysis and we will first run it. And while simulation is running, let me also talk about few of the details of this amplifier. So let's go ahead and kick start the simulation. Now while that simulation is running, what we need to notice is electrothermal simulator right now is working with two frequency domain simulators. That's number one. The thermal technology file is included which ships with this PDK that comes along with ADS and you can also give it a try on your own example which you build out of this kit. If we push down this hierarchy, you can see the two stage MMIC amplifier where each of these stages has the different part of the overall you know, PA design. If you look at the layout window, we can see the full layout design of this amplifier and basically the thermal simulation will be performed on this layout as per the device orientation and the electrical uh, power dissipation calculations. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our simulation status and here you can see the electrothermal loop is working. First it will be done for a one particular simulator such as harmonic balance and once that result is achieved it will be performed for a parameter or any other controller uh, which you may have on a schematic. So in this video we are focusing only on frequency domain analysis which is typically what all the designers uh, you know use for doing such kind of circuit designs. Now another interesting thing you can also notice in this design that everything is done as per the sub circuit block. So you can either maintain the sub circuits while performing this analysis or you can have a one level design which is like a flat design with all components on a single level. So all of them are supported by electrothermal. Now the simulation is finished as you can see and we have our response and here you can notice the subtle differences with electrothermal included or rather the thermal property or thermal analysis of the circuit is included. So let's zoom in a little bit and look at the circuit performance result. And here you would notice that we have around 2 dB of gain drop due to the thermal properties of the amplifier. And this can be uh, pretty much a specification make or break case in case your circuit performance you designed amplifier for is right to the spec where you want it and this 2 dB gain can suddenly make your amplifier out of the specification. And same thing you can see here instead of around 13 dBm output power now you have 11 dBm output power. So your amplifier may not be working as the optimum and the thermal response definitely has an impact on the overall performance. Now, along with this circuit response what you also can see is the thermal profile of the chip and here you can see the peak temperature is reaching to almost 200 degrees centigrade which might make your chip very hot and reduce the overall lifespan. Now here you can notice the power stage FET is more hot as you would expect compared to the first stage FET which is kind of medium power or low power you know kind of application. Now if you also want to get more clarity you can always switch on the surface plot and here you can see the three different fingers of the power stage of this amplifier and notice the temperature in the middle finger is the highest and the two 
uh, you know on either side has little lower temperature but still they are much higher than the driver stage or the first stage of the amplifier design so if you want you can probably reduce the overall power dissipation by increasing number of fat the number of fingers in the fat so that power gets distributed across multiple fingers and not allowing the power density to be very high in one specific finger so that will cool down a chip a little bit but that's all for this example now let's take a look at our other normal case which we tend to perform in our circuit design and that is where we kind of sweep the input power of an amplifier and look at the gain compression curve and different kind of power levels may have different profile or thermal profile on the chip so let's go ahead and run this analysis it's pretty simple as you can see this test bench is pretty similar to the earlier one except now we have a parameter sweep we are sweeping variable p in which is assigned to this source feeding our amplifier and we are sweeping from minus 15 to 10 dBm of input power in the step of one. Now this analysis will take some time and to save some time in this video I have already ran this analysis. So first let's go ahead and look at the result of the parameter sweep. And here you can notice the blue curve represents the normal circuit analysis. The red curve is along with the electrothermal and you can see that uh, the gain drop uh, in the amplifier due to the thermal profile of the chip and at around you know 3 dB compression point you can notice there is a significant difference which is close to 1 dB and again same thing you can see in the input power versus output power curve now when you run these kind of power swept analysis how do you uh, see the temperature profile of the chip at various input power levels all the information of all the power uh, you know base simulation which you have run you can look at individual window and you can open the thermal viewer by going to windows menu here open thermal viewer and you can see this is the test bench name and different power levels on which you can see the thermal profile of the chip so let's go ahead and open what happens at minus 15 uh, dbm of input power when your power amplifier is seeing minus 50 dBm so this utility will open the thermal viewer plot and we would be able to observe the temperature profile of our amplifier at minus 50 dBm now nothing else has to be changed in the test bench or anything in here as you can expect you know your temperature is close to 199 as we previously reported and it looks pretty good now the chip is really hot at minus 50 dBm. Now what if I would like to see what happens to my chip in a higher input power condition. So let's go ahead and open the response at plus 5 dBm. So let's take a look at what is the temperature. Now at this stage remember the peak temperature reported at minus 15 dBm of input power was around 199 degrees. Now with this is a great utility because then you can open each of these thermal viewer uh, you know windows at various power levels and look at the response without you having to run all these uh, analysis on different different power levels individually now here notice is plus 5 dpm of input power the chip actually cools down and has a temp peak temperature of around 155 now for many this could come as a surprise because you would have imagined when you have a higher input power to the chip you the chip might get heated up even more but in this case we can see with higher input power the temperatures are actually less now why that happens I leave it to you to think and if you can't find answer yourself please contact any of the key site support engineer and ask them about it it's a pretty interesting trivia question I'm leaving out in this video so that's all for this video i hope you found it very easy and understood how you can run the electrothermal analysis no matter how complex is your mmic or ic designs are so thanks a lot for your attention wish you all the best in your design work